Hello, everyone. Before I start my talk, I want to ask you, who among you have ever heard about smart cities? A few people. Who among you understands what smart cities are all about? OK, no one? Yeah, just one? Yeah, that's good. So good news, today is your lucky day, because <laughs> I'm going to be talking to you about smart cities. So for us to understand smart cities, we have to go back to basics. We have to understand that everything around us is made about connections. It's all about connections. Everything is connected. If we go a little bit high to the sky, to the universe, we have stars. They are all connected in networks and they form galaxies. They're all made about connections. If we go down a little bit to Earth, we have rivers connected to oceans, oceans connected to another oceans. We have continents, countries, cities, and villages. Everything is interconnected. Another type of connection is the internet. The internet is linking us everywhere in the globe, <laughs> facilitating trade, facilitating people to communicate and to talk to other people on the other side of the globe. We are also connected as people. We live in communities and we organize ourselves in communities in which we engage, we talk, we have relationships with people that we share uh, things in common. One very interesting connection is the one that happens inside our brain. We have a lot of neurons and then we have synapses connecting one neuron to another by transmitting knowledge. And this kind of connection is very similar to the connections we have in cities. Cities are a very nice place for connections because information can flow rapidly and easily. And that is caused mainly by globalization. So all cities across the planet, they are interconnected and we can be at different points. So we are not limited by space anymore. And because the cities, they are globalized, they provide easy access to food, to education, to healthcare. People find cities very attractive. And because of this, nearly 200,000 people are moving to cities every single day. In less than 40 years, 70% of the whole world population will be living in cities. So this exponential growth in urbanization are going to really make cities to struggle to provide basic services to citizens because we have limited natural resources, and to serve that population that's going to be living in cities, that in 40 years, we're going to need three Earths to support us. That's really difficult, not <laughs> likely to happen. And so we have to find smart ways to manage natural resources and to understand how we can better support people so we can have a sustainable growth of our cities. But we have got another bad news, that is all the connections linked in, in, inside cities, they have been broken. Cities, they are composed by many systems providing our services for us. So we have transport, we have energy, we have water, we have all those systems and they depend upon the other. For instance, energy depends upon water and transport depends upon energy. So we have connections among those systems, but those links, they have been broken. And those urban services, they need to be connected so we can provide better and more efficient services to citizens. So you understand the gravity of the situation we are living today. I'm going to show you some data. I'm going to show you some evidence. In this chart, we have the cost of cities inefficiency. So every year, we waste nearly 300 billion in energy waste especially in the built environment. So we produce energy, but because we don't understand the demand, we cannot understand how to better provide energy supply. And this here, nearly 200 billion euros, is food waste. And this peak number here represents the amount, it's 500 trillion euros every year worth of water we are wasting to create the food we are going to throw away. And congestion also creates a lot of cost for cities. Every driver spends around four months of their lifetimes in traffic. And traffic 
creates emissions, carbon emissions, that will create air pollution. And every year, 7 million people died because of complications caused by air pollution. And London is the worst capital city in the world with regards to air pollution. Try to take a breath at Tottenham Court Road. <laughs> You're going to feel smell what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so we have all this cost. And just to give you an understanding of the gravity of the situation, how much money we are wasting, you see this little G down here? This is the Google annual profit. When we compare Google, a very successful company, the amount of money they, they make, when we compare with everything we are wasting, come on, we have got to do something. We have to change this situation. How we can change this? The physical digital integration of city systems and people, technology, might help us to better interconnect those systems, to have people on board helping us to improve the quality of life inside our cities. And that created the concept of creating smarter cities. So the idea is to use knowledge to improve our cities. And knowledge is beautiful and it's going to help us to save the cities we have today. So the idea behind smart cities is we have a sustainable city, so we take care of our natural resources, we, we address climate change, we have an efficient infrastructure, they are new, modern, interconnected, and we make cities that are livable. People want, they are willing to come to cities to innovate and to make us a very intelligent and smart society. To realize this, we have to bear in mind three elements. We have to consider that. We have to consider systems that manage and operate the city infrastructure. We have to consider information that is going to link systems to people and to everything else in cities. And that's going to be unlocked by knowledge. And to design smart cities, the knowledge we acquire and we apply back into the city systems will help us to develop certain urban capabilities. Smart cities, they don't exist yet. They're yet to be developed. And in my vision, smart cities, they are composed by seven urban capitals that are unlocked and developed by knowledge, by the application of knowledge. So for us to understand what smart cities really are, we have to go back in the past into the beginning of the 90s, where some communities in the US and in Canada, they started to create a virtual representation of cities. You can understand by that yellow pages, having online yellow pages about the city. So transport is here, tourist attraction is over there, and then we provide those data to citizens. So at this stage, we were able to develop two urban capability. The first one is the physical capability of cities. And by capability, you can understand as an ability to do something, and this ability is, uh, is able to advance. So we can advance and change and keep updating those capabilities. <coughs> So physical capability is about infusing technology into cities to provide urban services, urban information. And institutional capability is about government supporting those processes, those urban processes that are online that gave rise to a government uh, topic. So at this time, knowledge was applied to tools. To get computers and put them into city halls and putting things online. Only that. Limited knowledge, people at that time, they had limited knowledge about stuff, how technology could work into the physical space, how that would get people connected as well. A later movement appeared with the development of ubiquitous computing, ubiquitous and pervasive computing. Basically, you can understand that as sensors everywhere, sensing the environment, getting information, infusing that information back into the environment to give personalized services to people. So the ubiquitous computing gave rise to ubiquitous cities that were mainly developed in, in South Korea. The idea of ubiquitous cities is you go inside a building, the building recognizes you, open the door, hits your coffee, and based on weather condition, change the environment inside the building to save energy and all that. But to develop ubiquitous cities, we have to develop them from ground up. And infusing those technologies into old settings like London is very difficult because we have overlapping aging infrastructure and technologies. 
So at that time, two liter was known to make these ubiquitous cities to work for the cities of today. We had to develop further capabilities, but because we could infuse ubiquitous computing into cities, we developed the idea of the, urban cap the human capability that is also to provide personalized services for people. After that, we had a new movement of cities that's called intelligent cities. The idea of intelligent cities is we have tools, but we don't know how to apply them to different contexts, so let's create a knowledge society. Let's get knowledge and spread, spread that across cities and help people not only to be smart themselves, but to create a community of smart people. So by having technology, modern technology and smart people, we can create a smarter society. And at that time, we could apply knowledge to processes. So we had services in the city, we could get people that were intelligent that could solve the problems we had today. So at this point, we could develop the social capital, the social capability of cities, better, that creates c societies together, create communities that work towards trying, creating innovation. But so, remember that I said we need systems, we need information, we need people. At this point, we had people and, and systems. System from the digital cities ubiquitous and now people involved in the process of innovation. So something is missing. It's missing the information that will unlock innovative services that will help us to tackle to tackle and to address uh, climate change and the problem with natural resources. So smart cities, they are the cities of the future that will create efficient services. So by infusing smart sensors inside your home, we can better understand how you consume energy so we can produce the energy you're going to consume. Because if you produce energy, we're going to waste that if people don't use. So we can meet better supply with the demand. And you, because you're going to be aware of your energy consumption, you can change your behavior. Smart cars will provide less emission, so we are going to also improve the health of people living in cities. So there are whole new demand of opportunities for development in smart cities. And everything there is also tackling sustainable development. So everything we do today will help us to create a better place so we can live, we can preserve the environment. And in smart cities, they will develop two additional capabilities. That is the capability of sustainability. So we preserve our environment. And now so we create an economic development. And the good thing about smart cities is they are for people. Technology is an enabler, but they are going to work for people. And you might think you need to own the stuff, you have to have money to create innovation. No. Think about it. Airbnb, they are the largest provider of hotels on the planet. They don't own one single room. Uber, the largest provider of taxis on the planet, they don't own one single car. There are around 400 applications out there providing apps for people to move around London better, TFL don't own any of them. And yet, those applications are helping people to save time, and that time translated to money is equal to 60 million pounds per year. So, Smart Cities will be about having those capabilities that will connect people with data information and also with the systems inside the city. And then, the truly smart cities are the ones that are able to provide better places for people to live where businesses can prosper, people are part of the economy, they can innovate, and we have a sustainable economy. Thank you very much.